all changes today. Uh, no, so anyways, what man, do you mean? So we, haven't, we haven't seen you on here in a while. I know, I haven't been on here in a while. I heard you've been doing some edgy material around town. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? People talk, my friend. People talk. I'm doing a show tomorrow night. I have a new joke that I haven't been writing a whole lot, but I have one new spin on something that I guess people could consider to be edgy. Because it has to do with identity politics. Oh, is it the one we were talking about last time? Yeah. Yeah, get, where are you at tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm doing a show on Saint Laurent, this place called Bootlegger. Is that any, it was a bar? Yeah, it's a, that's the name of the bar. It's a bilingual comedy show because somebody had seen me perform at Art Loft. Uh, back and they in booked October. you on Yeah, and they, and they were trying to get me to be on the show, but I was always, I went away in November. I don't know if I, I told, uh, last time I was on, when was the last time I was on your show? Yeah, a while ago, maybe a year. Oh, it's been that long? Close to, yeah. Because I had like some wild and crazy adventures since then. You, the last time I think I had you on, on, on this podcast was with Tenderloins and uh, Leonard Yell. Oh, right. Wow, it's been a long time. Yeah. We got I mean, that Brouhaha Comedy Festival with Leonard Yell next weekend. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's cool. Who else right. is on it? There's a lot of people because it's two nights of, of shows, right? And so uh, me, Darren Henwood, Kenny Robinson, um, Sarah Quinn are on one night. Yeah. Somebody else. I, I know the other night there's a... Uh, oh, d- yeah, I said Darren Henwood. On the other night there's, I think, Joey Elias is there. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'm making Solid. that up. I know that... Um, I know that uh, John Selig is there. Cool. Paul Beluyet. Paul Beluyet yeah, is there. Yeah, I love Paul. Yeah. yeah, so I'm trying to figure out. I think maybe J.C. left. Maybe J.C. left Montana is there too. Um, I don't remember the full lineup because it's like three, four shows, right? But uh, there's a lot of people. It's in, we're in Hudson? In Hudson, yeah. Hudson's on the way to Ottawa. It's between Montreal and Ottawa. Yeah, it's that way. It's exactly that way. It's a it's pretty uh pretty small small little town. Like I've been there. I've done comedy there two <laughs> two or three times. Yeah. Do you have to and explain everything to them? You're like, do you guys get the Facebook here? No, no, no. They're not that. It's not that. It's just that there's, <laughs> it's like a suburban far away to very. They're not retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little Amish community. And stuff. So like, wow. It's like he speaks into this thing and he sounds like the voice of God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's so loud. <laughs> We're not supposed to use that kind of technology around here. <laughs> Blast from her. Have you seen um, Tom Segura's new Netflix comedy special? Somebody had mentioned it on social media, and they were saying it was amazing. It was amazing, but he, he's getting a lot of shit for it. Oh, no way. That's the best kind of comedy. I, I love it, dude. Because I, <laughs> he, um, he made fun of Louisiana. Yeah. And he said they should build a wall, but around Louisiana. Why Louisiana? they shouldn't be allowed to vote. <laughs> oh, because they're all idiots. Yeah, they're, yeah exactly. And he's making fun of the way Cajun people talk. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's just getting all these messages that he's putting up on on Twitter and Instagram. It's hilarious. Wow. They're like, "Fuck you! Don't ever step foot in Louisiana." <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. If, I'm sure that's not going to hurt his career. But <laughs> no, not at all. Making any stops on the tour, you know, it's gonna that. it's gonna be good for his health. <laughs> not <to> stop by <laughs> his blood pressure. That and also because he said uh, retarded in the special, and people are getting mad. They're like, uh, he said retarded in the special, yeah. you know, my, my kid is uh, suffers from Down syndrome. And is his kid offended too, or is it just the parent? It's just the parent. <laughs> it's just the parent. The kid has no idea what's the going on. The kid has no idea what's going on. That's no. why I love, I love now that we live in that day and age where people get offended on behalf of other people. It's this like, kind of, I'm not saying it's right, but I understand if it's the parent at least of a little kid. Yeah. Right? Because the kid well, doesn't know. Sense, yeah. But it's so, your kid's not going to see this. Just don't show your right. kid. Because it's more because the the pain that the parent has to go through, and really it's the pain of you have a child that's never going to grow up. If you have a if you have that's, a friend that's like a thirty forty year old virgin, right? Do you go on porn sites and comment be like this is very offensive to my virgin friend? <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> it's like hey man, my friend's not been getting any of this shit. <laughs> And these guys have three women. What's going on here? <laughs> the, la- the, the, the last, the last time uh, my friend saw a vagina was when he was coming out of one, like a slip yeah. and slide, and <laughs> stretched Jesus over God. his head like a little hat or something. What? Uh, so yeah, t- are you going to start your podcast? You're supposed to start the whole the Mayo I'm, podcast. I'm working. I, I uh, right now I'm trying to track down a, a better laptop because I was oh, going to do it with my MacBook. It doesn't I'm, work. My MacBook. It's so fucking old, man. So I, I, everything. Okay, so right now. I got all these pieces of the puzzle, and they're all starting to come together. So I'm going to be leaving my shitty job real soon to have a training for a good job. And I don't want to go on the record. Yeah, whatever. It's like, But it's you're, an you're aerospace. From yeah. an opener to a middler? Is that what's yeah, going yeah, on right yeah, now? Yeah, in the employment, uh, in the employment game. Mm. Whatever. So I'll be making some good money, and then I could, uh, you know, 
I don't know if maybe uh, I'm a year away from getting a nice studio like this one. This is a badass studio. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I like it. I like with the cameras all set up and stuff. Yeah, we're it's 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 a highbrow. <laughs> it's a highbrow podcast. Do they alternate the two cameras? They yeah. alternate. No, yeah, they all. Cool. No, they're all stuck on you. Oh, nice. One's the back of your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! I got ball spot. Uh, no, we got a third one. We got a wide shot up there too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I got caught up with a lot of other different things. I, my, uh, my problem is I, I, I can't focus. I can't seem to focus on one thing. I get so distracted. I mean, you know this better. I know. I keep trying to yell at you to just focus on one <laughs> thing, get it done. Because <laughs> I keep going in all these different directions. But the thing is, you don't go fully in any direction. That's the problem. Yeah. Is if you would go in multiple directions, do multiple things at once, that's amazing. But it's not what you're doing. No. You just stop halfway, go back, stop halfway. So you're always just doing a circle. Right in the I middle. Know, it's crazy. So the, is this like Dr. Phil right now? Is it is. Doing? That's why I brought you on here. Just to <laughs> try to like, fucking talk some sense into you. Intervention I'm telling you, you have the mic. You have the USB cable. Yes, I got everything. Connect it to your goddamn PC. Start. Uh, oh, I don't got a PC. Whatever. Well, well I have a PC. It's a piece of crap. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> piece of crap. Mm. Uh, and just start recording yourself in the beginning. Just talk and get used to it. And grow from there. Yeah. There is also... Um, Supposedly this app that people could podcast, but it's probably shit, you know? There was like, a, I think one of the podcasters, I think Joey Diaz was talking about it on his podcast. What do you mean? You just whip it out and start it's talking on, to it's your on, phone? It's an app that you start talking on the phone, you can record podcasts. Isn't that just recording a phone call, basically? <laughs> basically, it's like any bum off the street can do a podcast. Well, now. they could now, too. It's not that hard. Yeah. It's it's harder, the quality, if you want video, you want this and that, obviously it gets a bit more complicated. Yeah. But in general, just recording, I mean, the Have, 4-H podcast was done for years with like a small little mic. Yeah, well, I remember back in the day. That was fun when we used to in do the In the basement. Body. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, that was yeah. really cool. I have to make sure the door is nice and sealed so his mom doesn't start. Like, hey. Yeah, she kept yelling at him. <laughs> and then there was the dog, too. His dog kept barking. <laughs> the worst was the dog. Why the dog? Was it, a little, was it one of those little yappers? Yeah, because the mom would be like, oh, you guys are recording. All right, fine. You know, it's just yeah. a human being. Right. But the dog doesn't give a shit. The dog's like, whoa, there's people downstairs. I want to hang out. <laughs> so the dog would just start barking. And then we had to come up with the decision. Like, do we kill it? <laughs> do we kill this dog? <laughs> Live on the podcast. Uh, tune in the next episode. We're going to do a curb stomp on the dog. <laughs> no, it was actually it was too cute. American History X style. Yeah, a little Snoopy. Yeah, it was fun when you think about that. Because I remember it used to come in the beginning when we first started in the basement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think there was weed involved in those days, was there? No, it was just me, you, Alex. Uh, and Tenderloins was there, too. Yeah, Tenderloins was there, too, in the basement. So I remember a couple of times doing a podcast here, and Tenderloins was here as well, and I think there was, like, vaporized. There was like Yeah, he was vape. vaping. I was vaping. You were vaping. I was vaping. We did a podcast at my place. Remember that? One I time? remember that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I was, like, so much weed going on. It was only Tenderloins and myself getting stoned. You're the only one, like, maybe got a contact. On. Yeah, that, that was the, the podcast where you let us know about the psychic what did I say about this? You went to the psychic, remember? After Tendy? After Tendy, because Tendy went to go see a psychic. And did he not talk about it on the podcast prior? Yeah, exactly. And he was telling us how it's legit and this and that. Yeah, and yeah, you and, and I, I went, went and I we both got scared. I would know, what did they say to... Uh, <laughs> oh, she said all kinds of shit that actually came true. You know what she said to me, though? She said that I was supposed to marry my now ex-girlfriend. <laughs> So uh, da, na, na. Uh, she was da, wrong. Na, na. She was so wrong. Did she? Her? I, me- I if we're talking about she the same. She's like, ex- I see you were gonna get married to this girl, and then after like four months later, we broke up. <laughs> <laughs> but you remember her? I mean, she's probably not gonna watch this, but she was, uh, she was a little fucked up. Anyway. She was a little nuts. Yeah, but it's okay. But so am I. So. Yeah, I was about to say like so it was, it was not probably crazy. like good compliment for a while, but then I was like, hey, I don't. This is like combustion waiting to. <laughs> occur like a her and I I'm surprised well you was always on and off right it was you'd break up and then it'd be like oh no. you broke up and then you'd be like no we're back together now we're back don't talk shit about her, I love her. <laughs> take back everything you said <laughs> that time yeah I was so in love and then the next week you're like I fucking hate her yeah, and then I was so dumb, in love what a dumb bitch um, yeah, yeah, she's okay flip-flop. I don't I have no she's Ill not a bad will. person she, no she's sweet she's just a little you guys just didn't mesh we didn't, we didn't mesh well no. that happens but I still keep my jokes about her so that's good obviously <laughs> wasn't the pizza one was with her right the restaurant one what was that joke jumanji oh god yeah That's hey a, you can actually it's a, bring that joke it's back a, it's now. relevant, it's relevant now. yeah it's it was when i wrote the joke it was like jumanji remember that joke from the 90s and now it's like oh thank god for remakes thank god for the rock He's yeah because every time i'm driving like my current job i'm driving i'm on the road driving the truck and i look over at a bus booth and i see the jumanji post and i'm like that makes my joke so much better yeah <laughs> just that's the only reason my joke is working now because of that you bring movie. It, you're bringing it back because i'm gonna do that joke for sure tomorrow um, but we were talking about pro- projects and stuff, like yeah. podcasts. I wanted to mention this as a thing. 
I'm looking into uh, a friend of mine suggests I look into this thing called Steam It. Steam It. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. <laughs> S T E M I T. And it's a site where it's like a social media platform, but you could actually get, pay, like, you get paid. You get uh, compensated for your for your work, for, for your contributions yeah, to for, society, for uploading original content, and for upvoting. If your if your uh, um, uploads get uh, get upvoted and likes and stuff, and if they get shares, and then like by upvoting other people's content, like you get paid and. A friend of mine was telling me your brother made like a ton of cash. Like you could also, I like the option that you could choose to get paid in uh, U.S. funds, which you know cash is king. They fucking wire that shit over to your bank account, or you can get uh, opt to get paid uh, uh, in uh, cryptocurrency. Wait, hold on. So what? Do you, it's like YouTube. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I I visited the set a few times. I'm still. I, well, I, what I, what is it? Can you look at videos? Can you? I, I think you could upload a video. Um, you could upload uh, v- uh, blogs, vlogs, writing, photos, anything like opinion pieces. And they run ads. I believe so. I haven't been. I I haven't been approved for it yet because you got to sign up for it, and then uh, your your uh, sign up like um, they have to approve your your sign up. So I'm still waiting, uh, but I don't know. That'd be cool. I like to work on that project because all these other projects. Well, wouldn't I that hadn't... project be like a platform to put your podcast on? That you could do that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking too. I wanted to mention that uh, with you, with uh, you know, uh, the Pantelis podcast. Oh, to put it up on there? Yeah. I don't know these people. Maybe who knows? Well, it would be cool. Well, YouTube is, you... is definitely screwing creators over. That's what uh, I was, yeah, I was so yeah. a lot about that. I wouldn't mind putting it somewhere else as well. People can make some, from what I heard and from what I understand, people can make decent money. And that was always my issue, too. It's like I was on Instagram and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to do these cartoons. Remember that? I was like, oh, I'm going to do a cartoon on Instagram. And then I was talking to an older friend of mine. He was pointing out to me. He's like, this podcast, this cartoon, you know, going to do these shows at fucking bars in front of like 10 people. It's like, are they paying you money? Is it putting money in your pocket? So then I was like, you got to prioritize things in your life. So now... I'm like, well, if this, you know, if if this incentivizes, this site incentivizes cre- uh, creative work, then that's the best because, uh, like, there's no, for me, it's like, uh, it's not the only reason why we do things like creative-wise, uh, like comedy and, like, any kind of, like, creative um, work, but it's a big part of why we get up in the morning and do things is to get fucking money. Right. You pay the bills. Why I pay the bills and laughs? No, they, I've tried that. It doesn't and work. Likes, Facebook likes. I'm going to pay like, them. Yo, you owe me rent. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, look how many followers like, I have on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. You can't doesn't evict work. me. I've tried it many times, Mayo. It's not working. So you think that with the motivation of money, you're going to accomplish your creative dreams? No, no. Is what I'm saying is uh, it definitely helps uh, to motivate somebody to work. Because if it's like a comedy, you know, I've been doing it for so long and stuff. And in the English scene, I mean, you know this better. I mean, because, well, you're pretty entrenched in it now. You're really doing it. Like, when I met you, I was hosting your show. I was like, I hosted so many people's first time. Yeah, stuff. it's true. I, I popped so many comics, cherries and stuff. Um, and even Tenderloins, too. I think I hosted his first but show. But he stopped. Tenderloins completely off the planet. All right. He was supposed to be on here today with us. Yeah, but he Wouldn't can't. That'd be fun. Yeah, he said he, he he's not <laughs> able to. Cause he had to work. What is he doing these days? I, don't know, I think he's beating up the homeless or something. This is very <laughs> questionable work that this guy does. He has a, does he have a cape and a costume that he's doing? It he with? only beats up bums. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing, man. Tenderloin disappeared completely off off the grid. I heard he got a girlfriend. Yeah, I don't think that's the reason. Cause he stopped doing comedy way before. Oh yeah, comedy wise, I think yeah. he just started. Uh, if you remember. So yeah. no, ten, but yeah, you, when you had started, I mean, you've seen a lot of different people come. <laughs> Can come I just go. mention something real quick? Hold that thought for a second, because I think you know what we did uh, that one night, mm-hmm. and we did the Dirty Thirty, yeah, and the third installment, because it always seems like things have to come in threes, right? Mm-hmm. And it feels like our upcoming third show, it's like uh, the impending release of uh, Guns N' Roses Chinese Democracy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like it's never gonna happen. Like the fans are like, man, this thing, man, it's been ten years. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it took the, the first. The first two <laughs> happened within months of each other. Right? Yeah, they didn't know it was about a year. Are you sure? I thought it was. It was July and then October. You sure it wasn't like a year? No, it was. I was thirty years old. Well, hence the thirty. I couldn't have. Yeah, it was July and then October. Wasn't I twenty eight or twenty nine? I was oh, okay. It was, was twenty thirteen. 
right. It was one happened in July, the other happened in October, so they were like back to back almost, right? They were seasonal differences. One was the summer, oh. one was the fall. No, and but I thought we needed more time because we did completely different sets. Yeah, we we came up with completely different sets How for do, the for a half hour. Yeah, <laughs> thirty minute different yeah. sets. And I was yeah, like, remember that was the challenge because yeah. we were like, uh, no, I no, cheated a bit, full, full new half hour, and you were like, I'm gonna cheat a bit. I, I was did. like, shut the fuck up, man, you don't cheat. We're all in this together. Remember? <laughs> yeah. And we had to come up with a brand new half hour a couple of months off, and it was fun because I got to try some very <laughs> aggressive stuff, and people were mad at me. They're like, you're normally happier on stage. Uh, it's because that's what I had at the time, right? I had some shit to talk about. So what were you uh, going through at the time? You had some personal shit going. On. I think I was going through stuff with a girl, and so I was, I was making fun of her a bit, and yeah. uh, then stuff with politics, and uh, that's what was going on at the time, right after the summer. Yeah. So we talked about those things, and I remember we had. So we said, okay, the third show is going to be around Christmas time, and it was supposed to be Tenderloins headlining, and it, we were supposed to do it in his region. What what was that monk? Where, where the fuck's he from? I give a, I got the room booked too. I was because I'm friends with a guy. Who was at AJ's. It was supposed to be in uh, that's it. Villamard. Villamard. Uh, Villamard. Yeah, that's because it. it was uh, you headlined the first, I headlined the second for my birthday, and then he was gonna headline the third. We were just gonna rearrange it. That was perfect. Yeah, and then the the and wheels just, just came off. I got the room because the guy was a friend of my dad's, and he was gonna, it was gonna be on his home turf. Hey, remember that? It was uh, we were basically kids. That's that's what we were. We're just. I didn't know what I was doing. It's not even that long ago. It's not even that long. It's five years ago. Six yeah, years ago. I don't know. I was going through shit on the first one, though. I, mean, I could yeah. tell. I could tell even when I watched him, like, that was, like, the worst performance I ever did. And yeah, it dude, it's on YouTube. Oh, God, yeah. it's on YouTube. I felt so ashamed. I'm like, everything is a professional shot. I'm like, <laughs> I've done, like, you couldn't have been there when I was, like, killing all these other Oh, uh, it was, and I remember so we, we were going to strangle you because you kept going over your time. And we were recording, right? So everything was supposed to be tight. And you're like, don't worry, I got this. And you went like 10 minutes over. You just kept fucking, oh, you were tr- you were looking, remember you were looking for the heavy laugh? Yeah, but I could But couldn't you had lost him in the beginning because you went on and it, you weren't yourself. You were like pacing and, and you sweating. You know what happened? And- I was going through some shit too. I was with a girl that we were together for like three years. And then I invited her to the show and then she didn't come. <laughs> and I was so depressed. And then the night, and then right before, um, I, yeah, I was like eating downtown. I went to go eat downtown. I was going to get ready for the show. I was just so depressed. I was like, and it was a cloudy, rainy day. I still remember it was all cloudy and rainy. And I was like, fuck, man. I'm like, man, I can't believe like, she, like I went to go see her. Like and she used to, she lives in Laval. I was dating. That was, I don't, obviously now if that would have, I don't care. Like that girl was stupid. You know that. Wait, so you were upset because she didn't show up at the show? I didn't, because I, I remember you were upset or not. All I remember is with Darren, because uh, Henwood was hosting, remember? <laughs> so we were there, and Darren's like, uh, he, he warned, it's as if he knew this fucking guy. It's like he knew. He's like, don't go over your time. Like he was, he was fucking coaching you, yeah. but it all went over your head. Like he, and then when he was ready to go on, he was talking to me. He's like, what the fuck, man? Like, how are we going to get this guy off? Because you just kept reaching. You kept trying. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it wasn't like you went two, three minutes. Oh, I didn't do You well. went like 10 minutes over. Oh, and yeah. Tenderloins was like, oh, well, at least I went on. I'm, I'm happy. You know, it's up oh, to you God. now. I'm and so I was angry. fucking irate. And I remember it showed also in the set that I did because I was way more angry in the set when I was doing it. Well, it helped you though, right? I don't know if it helped me because I was angry. I swore more than I should have. Like I, yeah. I, I wasn't. We were nervous. We I were think, nervous as hell. I think we were really nervous for that show because because we, we did it too early. We should have never done that. I think we got a lot riding on it, and I was like going through my shit. So like for you and your second thing. So what was going on with you? Like you just got out of a breakup on your second. No, one? I don't. The second thing I just had. Uh, it was like this weird thing that was going on with this girl that I had oh, met wait, from the first show. Like, I remember the first yeah. show. Yeah, went for Chinese food and, in Chinatown. Yeah, exactly. And, we were and then and, and then what happened was like I was talking. Uh, yeah. Like I was talking about that and about. Like, stuff where she was there she was in the audience yeah. and i didn't know that viron had gone into a fight with her sitting down in front of me right before the show started so i had yeah, no yeah. idea yeah, yeah so yeah, they were yeah, both yeah. like with their arms crossed and upset and i was laughing at that like i was making <laughs> jokes but i had no I, I found out later that they got into an argument and shit and it was just but uh so mine was more the second show was more i was talking about politics and i was talking about this girl so um it yeah. was very uh, different from the first one which was kind of all over the place. I was touching on different subjects. Wait, um, but how could it have been? That's what I'm trying to understand. I think it was a year after. The reason I say that is because I was with that girl, Allie, who was my last girlfriend. Or sorry, not... not it's like, not, I was with her. How could it have been? We went. We did the first one in July, I think. June or no, July. No, I'm telling you, it's man. It's right there. We did the first one oh, in yeah, June, there. June 22nd. And then the second show was at the Rialto... Uh, in October for your birthday. 
Well, how old are you? Just count it. Yeah, so uh, 13, and it would be October. in 13, and I'm, I'm 34. That's it, October 2013. Uh, uh, we're in 2008, right. so that's five years ago. So it would have to be in 14. It's impossible that it was 14. It's not impossible because I was with my... I was with uh, my... You're uh, right, it was, was 14. I was maybe. with the other girls a year. It was a year it after, man. It was a year after, okay. Yes, it was. Because the thing is, my... Because I remember... Mood, spra- my mood changed so much because I was with this girl and, you know, she was all cute and bubbly and she would... My friends even gave me shit about it because they're like, hey, we, we get it, you're a comic, you're funny, but you're not that funny. Like, she laughs hysterically at all your dumb jokes. Wait, and how so, old are you now? 30... I'm 34. Are you 34? Yeah. You're 34 right now. Yeah. That means that you were 34 in October, just now, 2017. Yeah, I just turned out 34. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's after, no, I'm 34. Yeah. So then that's it. 2017, October, you turned 30. It's four years. It's 2013. <laughs> you oh, dickhead. Yeah, how could things have changed so much for my countenance and everything? Cause but, that's you, not, but that's what's funny about it is how things changed. Because I remember cause, we were scrambling because I remember we, uh, uh, we went on the radio. I remember I had to go on the radio to... Um, to promote the show and shit like that. Yeah. And, uh, where <laughs> was that David Rain's book? Yeah. Shit and do you remember <laughs> on Park? Cause we were there and I remember right after we were talking, we we're sitting outside and we're looking at each other and Ten Lewis is there and Ten Lewis is freaking out. He's like, have you guys written new material? And I was like, I don't know. I have about 15 minutes, man. I don't know where I'm going to get the other 15 from. And you were like, ah, I'm going to cheat. I don't care. It's my day. I'm going to just use the same shit. <laughs> and then Ten Lewis was panicking. I remember Ten Lewis being like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I can't use the same fat jokes. They're going to think all I have is fat jokes. And he was flipping the fuck out. Well, he can't and do fat jokes anymore. He, could he lost too much weight. Now he looks, yeah. he looks too good. He can't do fat jokes. Yeah. Well, last time I saw him, he looked okay. He looked pretty good. Hey, he's looking good. He's looking healthy. He's doing good. Just that he has no time for us, but he's doing good. <laughs> it's better that he has no time for us. We, clearly, we were a bad influence. Yeah, because we were always what we were always taking him out to eat. What, what the fuck were we doing? I don't him? know. Yeah. All you can eat was pie eating. Contest? I just kept giving like, him gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time we brought him here? We had uh, order. I just paid uh, him in gravy. <laughs> we poured all his pizzas. No, I don't think it's us. I think it's because he got too busy. But. I remember, uh, I remember the scramble. I remember the scramble because what happened was we did the show <laughs> in June, and then I left. I went. Remember, I went to Greece alone for two weeks. I just said, "Fuck it." You went by yourself. Yeah, I went do by you myself. I just, there? I do have family there, but oh, I didn't, okay. I didn't tell anybody. I just went by myself. I just wanted to hang out in Athens. Oh wow! So I, I, I flew down for two weeks, <laughs> uh, I, and while I was away, it was kind of decided. Hey, in October we should do a second show. And since I was so calm. I was like, yeah, yeah, I sent you guys a message. I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Because yeah. I didn't think in my head, where the fuck am I going to come up with a new half hour? Right. And then when I got back, I was like regretting it. I was like, oh, this is a stupid idea. But it, we were too far along. We had already booked where we got screwed over for the money, remember? Where they fuck took all yeah. our money. Can so you go we, on the record and say, fuck David Rain? We can swear <laughs> on this thing. Right? You can swear on this thing. Yeah. Or David Nankop. But we, we uh, cursed them out many times on this show before. Uh, um, I think we had talked about this. What I, You had went through it in detail, I think, when Leonard Yell was on. On oh, yeah, uh, exactly did. what happened. Yeah, you went through yeah. the whole detail, but uh, you, because you had control of that I had no power over it. You had done all the booking for that yeah, show. He's a scumbag, yeah. I did all the booking for the first one, and Tenderloin's was supposed to do all the bookings for the third one. But then you ended up doing the booking for the third one, and we were nervous that we were going to get fucked over money wise again. Um, but it never happened. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think so because we kind of went our separate ways. And then you did a special, and then you got a bunch of other acts, which I found was cool. You I, I know? did it twice. Yeah, I did two of them. Yeah. But I thought that was cool, though, because you were giving other guys a shot, and they were all funny guys. They were all funny guys, and the other thing is, I couldn't... And I did another, sorry, I did another special with Jeremy Dovsky, remember that one? That was fun. And then I had you on that one, that was good. Yeah, that was good. That was a fun room, but we didn't we didn't record it. No, you guys didn't record. I that recorded was, mine at... Uh, that was the mistake. Yeah. Fuck. And then they now they tore down that building, you know? Oh, is it? Well, it looked like it was. Gonna it was the fucking fun. That was the best though. Well, I was talking about it when I went. I don't know where I thought I was gonna get raped. It was like it a was. Weird... That was cool. It was next to cool Bell Center, right? Yeah, it was yeah. crushed shooting Bell Center. I remember. It was like a jam space full of like uh, old like Pearl Jam flyers and then fucking all crust and it was like uh, some squeegee punks were squatting in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was. Uh, it had a cool vibe to it. You remember you performing and they had like a like a puppet of jesus <laughs> yeah i had commented right away because i couldn't see the puppet from when you're it's in the so back weird. you can't see it it's right when you start when, when you go on stage <laughs> yeah, or wherever yeah, it is yeah, yeah. 
And uh, when you're performing it, so I remember I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And uh, so I said, "I got to talk about this. Like, are we all gonna ignore the, you know, the the Jesus effigy and all that stuff? <laughs> Let's discuss." <laughs> so I spent a couple of minutes talking about everything that's going on around us, yeah. and everybody had a good time because they're like, "Oh, thank God, somebody's mentioning it." Because yeah, I think yeah. the person that was hosting never mentioned it, and everybody was looking around like nobody lived there, nobody knew what they were. Who expecting. was hosting? It was Jeremy Dobsky and myself. We closed it. You were opening, and then who do we have host? I don't know. I think. I don't remember. I don't remember. Maybe it was Sandiford because that's where I met Sandiford. Could Chris Sandiford? I like Chris Sandiford. Yeah, me too. That's where I met him. It's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have been Chris. I haven't seen him in a bit. I think he's in Toronto. I I think he is Toronto. Okay, because I haven't seen him in a bit. He's he's fucking, he's a funny kid. Yeah, he's really funny. I find he's like, um, he's such a character, you know? Yeah. He's a real character. Like, you know, there's people like, there's people that have good jokes, good delivery on stage. You know, they got good stage presence, got good performance and stuff. But he's just like naturally funny. Like I love when I meet people who are naturally funny. He just has it. It's just, just him. It just comes out of him. It just yeah. like it, it comes out of his pores, his comedy, you know. It's good. Yeah. Uh, so there was that. Yeah, it, it's funny when you look back, right? Like it doesn't seem to me it seems like just yesterday until I actually think about everything. Yeah. When I think about everything, it feels like a lifetime. Yeah. But if I but in general I feel like we just did it last year. I know it's crazy, but it's, the thing is that time starts speeding up so fast. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm on a ride. Like, get me off of this thing! Like, it's, it really is. Yeah, it's it, fucking crazy. Because everything changed. We we because we had plans of the three of us what we were gonna do together. We we're gonna go on tour, tour, do all that stuff, and then the wheels just fell off. That you know how many times in comedy people have like I talked to so many people we had these big <laughs> lofty ambitions we're gonna go on tour I remember um, and uh, and this I'm not uh, uh, shout out to these people I'm not gonna, I'm not talking about them to like uh, in dis- in a disparaging way or whatever this is back when I was uh, doing comedy and uh, Jeremy Dobbs he's always like my homie like I love that guy yeah. um, and then there was a uh, he doesn't even do comedy anymore what's his name that guy Glad Jason Yero. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember Jason him. Nero. So he was, he was there, and then Emma Wilkie. I, Emma and then, still does comedy. Uh, yeah, and she's We're still on the stand-up. same show tomorrow at the Comedy Nest. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's really funny. She's solid, good writer. She's like so good. But like, it was us four, and I think they all were talking about like the plan, like planning to like uh, put together like a tour of comics. That's smart. And go to, and I was the only one at the time who was like, nah, I don't know. Cause I had some other shit going on with like work or something or no, I was in school at the time and I didn't know how I was going to pull it off because I was in, remember when I was in trade school? Oh, I remember that. I remember talking yeah. to you every day and you wanted to kill yourself. I fucking hated it so much. I, Cause you were like, I don't know how to do this. You, like you, and you were coming to the comedy clubs that night. We're, we're doing sets. And I was with you, notes. You were right. Yeah. With notes and you're trying to study. <laughs> And I remember you oh, coming to the club and, and trying to vent. And then I told you, don't talk about trade school on stage. Because uh, you were thinking about it. You're like, should I just talk about it? I was like, no, Yeah, it's not. yeah, yeah. No, I was, and I was drinking those big pint, those big beers. And I'm like, hey, I'll just get loaded and talk about trade. Yeah. If I go back and talk about it now, there was a lot of nuggets of humor there. But it was nothing to do with the things that were upsetting me about it. No, you were just upset about being in school and getting graded and all that. You hated it. You're like, well, I'm not a child. I test. fucking, I fucking hated all that shit. I've been, you know how I, I'd been doing school almost my whole life. Yeah. Uh, I went to university uh, up until <laughs> I was 25, and then after I got out of that, I floated around a bit doing comedy and everything. And then I'm like, fuck, you know, life is hard out there in the world. So I, I went back to trade school, and then I even did my financial license. And I was oh like, God, I'm, I remember when you went, where were you, Sun Life or some shit? I remember where you went for brutal. a bit. Oh, dude. So brutal. It I was so not you. And then we were. I was wearing a suit. I was wearing a suit. I was, I had, I, I bought a vintage briefcase. Yeah, I, was, I, that's, I remember the briefcase. And I yeah, remember the that was cool. it, it was a it's night. Quentin Tarantino style. And I was it, thinking, oh. it was the first night that you had ever brought me to Grumpy's to do a set. Oh jeez! And so you were sorry. talking, yeah, and you were talking about the day. I think the next day you had to go in or something like that. Wasn't I wearing and, a suit on stage? Yeah, I came and, from and, work, and, and I was like, "Who wants to buy insurance?" And, and you shit. wanted to kill yourself. Oh uh, fuck! I and always wanted to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I remember, man. I remember it was, it was fucking these all these times that weren't like taped and weren't documented. They're just in in your head. Yeah. Um, but there was some some fun and it was some good times in the sense that we learned from all that shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I learned a lot from tough sets. Um, I learned a lot from watching people. 
there's so much there's so and just uh, it's things that people don't think about doing comedy right in the beginning it's nothing's given to you so you have to learn how to book shows properly put the right people on how to book venues how to book the right venue that you're going to get the right money for the people you have coming like when you're up and coming you don't really have the many people that you're that you know are guaranteed to show up to watch you right right so you got to be careful what you're booking so that you don't lose money on it you know what's the deal do they give you drinks do they get all this shit nobody teaches you you just have to learn you learn how to be a businessman yeah we we got lucky the first time and the second time we got fucked over and then since then, when I was doing my own stuff in the summer, like at Cafe Campus and stuff, it was great. Like they they had the best deal set up. For I me. was at that show when it came yeah. by. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it but they nice. had they had also good de- the the venue's great, but they had a great deal set up that I didn't even know they could have fucked me over at the end. I didn't even know. So the first time I did it there, I thought it was because uh, you know you have to pay for the sound guy, you got to pay for the venue, all that stuff. But I didn't know that they were giving you percentages off the drinks that people were buying. So at the end of it, I thought I had to pay them, like, I owed the money. And like, no, 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 no. And, and you know, there was ticket sales, this and that, that they were giving back from the online tickets and all that. Yeah. And I was made more money. I was like, what the hell? Right? I was like, how did that happen? That's she good. was like, yeah, well, these are the drinks you sold. So, it, like, you know, oh, bounces so itself nice. out. And I was like, shit, I didn't even know I had that in the contract. Yeah, I didn't yeah. read it that yeah. well to, to realize. And she's like, yeah, that's how it works. By, by the way, I just want to uh, point this out. You and I... Um, we're dressed like we're a couple of members of Antifa or something. Right. Well, with the black. Oh, we're yeah. both wearing the black hoodies. Yeah, we're yeah. rocking the black hoodies. We're gonna go smash some windows of the bank later. I was with Poseidon earlier. We went. Uh, we went to the um, uh, exchange office, and then I came here. We cleaned up. Uh, like I mopped. Well, my girlfriend actually came and mopped, and we cleaned oh, up nice. the studio a bit. You've trained her well. <laughs> <laughs> so we. Um, yeah, I had to clean up. I put these things up here for the wires and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So we did some work this morning. So I was dressed like this. I'm gonna go wash the car later. And yeah, it's a good. Uh, it's good weather. I haven't washed my car in months. The, everyone's car looks like crap. Well, the, the thing is, mine like is more. Mud piles. It's very bad. You're supposed to wash every couple of weeks at least, right? But I kept. I was planning on washing it a few weeks ago, and then it was that. Remember that huge storm that happened? Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck it," because I was going to Houston, and I was like, "Fuck it," I'll just leave my car at the airport. And that's I just left it at the airport for the whole week or whatever. Yeah. And I said, "How much did the car? I, ch- do you, how much you have to pay?" Oh, nothing. Money? I got the hookups. Okay, so you got a guy who works. <laughs> yeah. over here. I'm not gonna fucking pay for that. What are you crazy? I don't know. There's not there like a place where you have to. I think you. I think logically you have to pay for it, but you know yeah. if you're if it's you know, when you're in your city you got to have hookups like this. Yeah, it's good to have hookups everywhere. Uh, that's the tough thing about moving to a new place. Yeah, that's how I always see it. Whenever I think about moving to a new place, I always think about that. You lose things that you you take for granted every day. Sure, you lose all that. I only got hookups at my work and. <laughs> I was uh well, I was at my buddy I was telling you about earlier, but he um he works at a bank and he can't really hook me up, so that would be nice. With you could. hook you up with money, yeah, some free samples or something. He's like you try these new hundred dollar bills. Yeah, yeah, these They're ones great. smell like maple syrup. It's nuts, dude. So what do you? What about you? What do you think? What do you think led to kind of our split? The Is three this of what us? we're talking about? Is this like what we're like? Uh, Paul McCartney and Ringo start talking about. Well, no, no, I, I'm just curious because you're here now. Let's just shoot the shit. Why not? I mean, well, well, you had that drive, so you. you I'm really, uh, I, I really admire your tenacity and your drive. Tenacious. Yeah, like you kept pushing, and for me, it was like the focus that you have is so laser sharp. And in my case, is like that was something I always had to work on because I had so m- I had my hand in so many different pots. So. You really went for it, and you're seeing the fruits of your of your labor now. So I think that's good. Uh, tenderloins. I don't know if he ever really wanted to do it, and I'm like, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's like if you take you and then like I'm right in the middle, and then tenderloins like doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He's like completely <laughs> out of it. I um, I don't know. I could see why people would want it. I so many times I wanted to quit, and you, I'm sure you felt yeah. like that too. I mean, it's it's one of those things comedy it's because there's no like clear path it's never it, it like never ends no and ne- that's the thing it never ends it's like this runway that goes on forever and every time you think that you have some traction going you're like man this is great oh my god i'm gonna oh i'm starting to figure it out i'm starting to find my voice and then like you get Bam. yeah something you get lambasted wall. yeah um so i don't know right now i'm just kind of well I'm kind of not because I want to change topics, but I'm 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 in the middle right now. So like I have this show tomorrow night. I got asked to do it. I told the guy who put me on, and I'm like, you know, I'm not really like doing a lot of shows You're these like, days. I'm a racist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, great. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> That's the kind of show it is. Um, no. Anyways, um, I'm not really doing a lot of shows, but 
I think <laughs> I don't want to throw tenderloins under the bus, but I feel like if we would have only did that third one. No, I wouldn't have changed anything. Why do we all dismantle? I mean, well, I liked because here's the thing: I liked having all three of us because we used to be able to sure. bounce ideas off each other and do do good. projects that need multiple people. For example, podcasting yeah. or um, I don't know sketches, which we didn't. I'm just saying we had the option, but I love the fact that we kind of had that motivating factor. Each one would motivate the other, right? And we'd move forward, you know. Because remember when the three of us first got together and started doing it. We got the we got Leo involved. We got the recording. We yeah. got all that stuff that we didn't do. Does he still that. own that restaurant? Uh, yeah, he still it moved now. The, the restaurant moved, but he still owns it. Okay, so O Noir still exists. Still exists. Uh, he, f- as far as I know, he still owns it. If he doesn't, it's do you a remember we to went me. in there one time? It freaked me out. I was like, "What the fuck?" Like I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd like to eat there. Completely in the dark. I, I like to see my food. Yeah, see your food and your uh, your wait staff is blind and stuff, and they're all. I, well, I met the wait staff. None of them were blind. Oh, so it was false advertising. Well, unless I don't care that people unless are they weren't wait, unless there's other staff there that I didn't know because they just never came to see me. I <laughs> like the idea. The concept is interesting because your senses, you would imagine, would be heightened, right? If you, but can't. that's the whole point. That's the whole point. Is you everything is more delicious. But remember, okay, it reminds me of when I was a kid in uh, elementary school, and they used to bring us into the gym, and there was like a room that they shut off the lights, and they're like, "Oh, this is these are witches' eyeballs," and they would put your hand in a like a oh bowl for of, Halloween, and yeah, stuff? bowl of grapes, yeah, and then oh, and it's like this is brains, and it's yeah, like jello it. and stuff. I remember, I remember. It's kind of like the same thing. Yeah. Well, no, they don't do that to you there. There, you you choose your meal beforehand. <laughs> You go in, they serve <laughs> you it to with you. Utensils. You eat with utensils. The whole point is to exercise different muscles and to um, heighten your senses that you're going to use for eating, which are your smelling and your tasting. Because you, wh- apparently, the, the the rumor is that when you lose one of your senses or when they're off, they're um, yeah. disabled for a bit. You your other ones become, become enhanced. Yeah, yes. you heighten your senses. So if that's true, which I think it is. You then taste and smell things better. That's why good comics are the ones who've had so much pain and suffering in their life. <laughs> we're all disabled mentally. Yeah, we're all fucking been incapacitated by, yeah. And we just swung the other pendulum, fucking swung the other way. Imagine people leaving that restaurant just like on first. That would be the worst first date. You're just covered in sauce, like. Well, I, I, okay, look, you have to have some kind of hand-eye coordination <laughs> regularly, so you kind of know even if you close your eyes where your mouth You're is like, situated. Maybe you do want to do on a first date to see if the person's that fucked. You know, you're like, oh, this is gonna, this isn't, this yeah. is not gonna if be a good time. She could eat a bowl of spaghetti properly. I don't think she's gonna be able to be the mother to my kids. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it could also be a good first date if you don't want to see her. When I was, <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, you're like a, literally like a blind date. <laughs> you can't even see the fucking person. Um, when I was a kid, I was not that I've changed. But I'm a real messy eater. Yeah. And when I, I remember when I was a kid, I got I was uh, I went to McDonald's. I got ketchup in my ear. How the fuck, Mayo? I don't know. But the only reason I was like this trying is such to, a Mike Mayo. I thing. was trying to like figure out how it must have happened, and I think it's because I get easily distracted. So I was probably I dunked the the fry, and I was probably about to bring the fry to my mouth, and somebody called my name. And I was like, "What?" And like, "Oh God!" And I think that's what it would have happened. That's funny. Yeah, I think. It was, all, it was all in there. I thought it was all crust at the end of it. Like, after I was going home, I was like, what the fuck? It was oh, like you didn't ketchup. even notice that you had fucking no, fries No, it was like after it was, <laughs> it was like ketchup. You were a stupid no, was, child. I just had ketchup. Yeah, I wasn't smart. But our kids, I don't know. You know, you know how they're saying kids are getting smarter? Yeah. But they're also eating laundry detergent now? Like, I don't laundry know. Laundry detergent puns. <laughs> I, I saw that it was like a, somebody posted on social media. It was like, that's the new flavor of Oreos. <laughs> like, I don't understand how they're getting smarter if they're eating laundry detergent. But it's, I think it should, I don't know why we're trying to protect these people. It's like natural selection. Like, there's too many people on planet Earth. Some of them aren't going to be, you know what Winners. I mean? Winners. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that we should encourage them to eat the laundry detergent pods. But if people are going to be drawn to that, they're probably not going to grow up to be CEOs of a fucking big multi, like, five, Fortune 500 company. That's very true. They're, they're, they're not, not going to grow up and, like, cure cancer. It's like, oh, this guy cured cancer after he's recovered from the, in the hospital. After he recovered from the, the Tide uh, <laughs> ingestion. After his intestines uh, practically dissolved and uh, he was given the... <laughs> but it's not the dumbest headline I, I read. I read online a few months ago, um, and the headline was "Sick pedophiles pose as chicken nuggets online to lure children." But it's like, how stupid is your kid? that's going to meet a chicken McNugget. Like, what do you mean? Like they put on a costume that looks like a like chicken McNugget? They, they, no, their profile photo is a chicken nugget, and they talk to these kids like, "Yo, I'm a chicken nugget. You want to meet me here to eat me or something?" But if your kids. That <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, I can't believe that means that it was premeditated. There was like it's like but think- it's crazy because there's a few things wrong with it. Number one, it, the headline says sick pedophiles, as if there's normal pedophiles yeah, out yeah, there, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, right, right. And second, it's like the blame is on the pedophile, the industrious pedophiles that are posing <laughs> as, as chicken nuggets. That's How come none of the blame goes to the kid or to the parents? Like, if your kid is going to meet a chicken <laughs> nugget, <laughs> like, that might be the only chance to have getting laid their entire life. Like, oh, my ugh. God. Like, but um, do you think that there was, like, multiple pedophiles, like, they met and they talked about, it? like, one guy, like, <laughs> they're smoking cigarettes, like, man, these kids these days, man, I don't know, social media, they're telling their parents, tell them not to talk to strangers, what are we going to do? <laughs> and then the other guy's like... No, uh, I was at the I was at McDonald's the other day. I was uh, checking a look at the you know the ball section. I was taking a look in the playground. Kids love at, chicken nuggets. And they, yeah, they were going crazy for these chicken nuggets. <laughs> Bill, are you saying we should Maybe. pretend that we're chicken nuggets? <laughs> it's like yeah, <laughs> we've been calling you retarded for years, Bill. But that is the greatest idea that's you've ever come up with. That's the greatest idea you've ever had. That's the best idea. It's way better than that time you tried to bake a cake in your bathtub. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so it's because i don't know and do you think I, there's no way with a lot of people it must have been a one case and people probably misunderstood the case because that has to be a really stupid kid it's that not even it's not even going to meet a disney character. It's going to meet a chicken nugget that's talking to you <laughs> online the kid this sounds like uh the kid's borderline autistic or something it's like yeah yeah but no i don't know it, either you're taking advantage of a kid that really has mental problems yeah because it can't be a normal like i'm thinking of my nephews and stuff if you would tell them you know there's chicken nugget you'd be like what yeah that, that doesn't make stupid. sense yeah they, but that's he, not in the scope of reality like your kid's on acid what is he <laughs> fucking taking a chicken <laughs> what is he on lsd or something and these parents like don't they ask questions like where are you going son I'm going to meet uh, <laughs> Mick Chicka, Mick Chicka do the. I'm going to nugget. meet the chicken nugget. Bring me back a burger. Bring me back some fries. <laughs> like what? Do you, like how? How does this work? I don't understand oh, how it good. works. Right? Don't you yeah. have questions? I have so many. Like I read the, the headline. And I was like, all I have is questions now. And where were they asking to meet these kids, <laughs> anyways? Like where would a chicken nugget hang out? <laughs> in an <That's> alley. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be hanging out in the uh, parking lot after. Oh, but I can't eat here. You're gonna be all dirty. No, no, don't worry. You can eat me. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the rap, the rapper still on. That's why you should raise your kids vegetarian, so don't fall for that shit. There you go. But wouldn't it? Would you ever, if you're raising a kid? Yeah. And let's say the kid's ten. Right. It's pretty, pretty old. Ten years old. Yeah. Was that the age of the children? I don't know, but okay. they're talking to him on social media, so obviously the kid's not three. Right, because he's learned. He knows how to use a keyboard. Yeah. So I'm thinking like a twelve year old or something. Ten, twelve. Let's say your kid's twelve. Right. And your kid tells you, yeah, dad, this is the person I met online. It's a, it's a chicken nugget. You know, you told me to be fair with everybody. And I love chicken nuggets. So I'm going to go hang out with this chicken nugget. What if it's the year of identity politics and people are identifying if, as a chicken well, nugget? Well, regardless, would you look at your kid and be like, yeah, go meet the chicken nugget? Or would you be like, I mean, yeah, go meet the chicken nugget and never come back because it's just <laughs> it's the way the world works. Like <laughs> You're like throwing them to like the if, wolves? If they, yeah, if they're going to take you, I mean, they might as well take you now because <laughs> it's going to get ugly for you in the future <laughs> if you're 12 years old going to meet chicken nuggets. Jeez, well, at least I won't have to pay for college. <laughs> right, I would ask so many questions. That's why I feel like it might be a misleading headline. Like, or I, I feel like the story... It's a slow news day. It's a slow news day and they're just taking stuff out of context because how many kids... And, uh, it seems eating so eating Tide Pods? Unbe- yeah, no, that's you, that's the other argument. They're like, really? You don't believe a kid's going to go meet a chicken nugget? Kids are eating Tide Pods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, you know what? Fuck, maybe I should shut my mouth. Kids might be that they stupid. They look like it... W- but they Tide Pods look like they could be delicious. They look, look like candy. <laughs> like, if you could make a candy that looks like Tide Pods. You remember they have, like, Popeye candy sticks, and they were Popeye cigarettes for the longest yeah. time? And then they just took the little red thing on the off the end, the little um, ember on the end, and they're like, no, now they're candy sticks. But they used to be, when I was a kid, they were Popeye cigarettes. Yeah, I remember them being Popeye cigarettes. And it was like, <laughs> this. You try to smoke them yeah, and smoke. eat them. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. You remember that? You but all this stuff. You start smoking, you start eating your cigarettes. But all the candy they fed us, now we know was poison. <laughs> well, well, they're yeah. just like, it's just sweet. It's just sugar's fine. And now <laughs> we find out they were poisoning children. It's like, what are you <laughs> eating? Glue. There was one, it was, um, it was like literally like a tube. Of just sugar. Do you remember those tubes that oh, you just reminded me? And you, it was like toothpaste. Yeah, yeah. But you would just sugar in your mouth. Oh right? yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember taking it like I was a junkie. I was yeah. taking the spoon and I was like, <laughs> I was putting it in the spoon and I was like, 
eating it, fucking straight sugar, man. Snorting it. How do I not have diabetes? <laughs> yeah, but that's why I think the diabetes. Dipstick, the dipstick with the powder. Oh, the yeah, do you remember the, you, would li- you would have to lick it to get wet and then the powder would stick? <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh, my fucking God. Fucking kids sm- walking around, you smell like sour cream and fucking... <laughs> Uh, dirty, gross milk products and shit, and fucking all fucking full of sugar all over. Oh the my face. god! It used to be such. I remember the Coke candies. Remember the Coke candies? They were like little Coke bottles. Those were delicious. They were delicious, but essentially, what is it? It's just glue. Oh yeah, <laughs> essentially, yeah. It's well, the gelatin, which is fucking which amazing is, for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when my friend's uh, mom, when I was growing up, she was a nurse, mm. and I remember we were eating Jello in her uh, in the kitchen. She was like, "Jello, Jello's good for your hair. It makes your hair grow." <laughs> And I was like, where did this woman's a nurse? Where did you you probably were you gonna put leeches on your patient too? You fuck like where what book of some medical science did she read that she's like this with well, the a Necronomicon? Sh- yeah. <laughs> just bringing patients back from the dead. <laughs> but Jell-O. it's true, when you back in the day you would always get that though. You people that were in weird positions like uh, nurses would be smoking <laughs> and telling you things. Well, even now you go in front, you go to a hospital. There's always like nurses and doctors outside in the cold and smoking <laughs> cigarettes and stuff. They don't care. Yeah, I love it when they tell you like you should stop smoking. You should stop doing drugs before you see me, dude. <laughs> That's what would help. Why the doctors do drugs? Everybody does drugs. I guess so. I mean, you got yours right there. Yeah, yeah. caffeine, coffee. I don't do coffee because uh, I never liked the taste of it. But hey, I love coffee. coffee. I love the taste of it. I'll. Uh, the other day, actually, I was counting this. So we were at the studio. We were recording for the YouTube videos. Yeah. And uh, it was 4 p.m. And I had already drank six coffees. What? Six big ones like that? Big ones like that. Do you not get, like, hot sweats? And Nothing. Not, you don't fucking... Because I kept drinking six at 4 p.m. But I kept drinking. I didn't count the rest, but I kept drinking. Do you ever sleep? Dude, I drink coffee. I could drink a cup of coffee and go to sleep a half hour later. And I, it happens often. You but know how some people, like kids, used to drink warm milk at night? I'll drink a warm cup of coffee and go to bed. That's well, because I used to. I remember seeing my parents and their friends do that. They'll drink coffee late at night and then they'll all leave and go home. And my parents will go to bed. And I was, what the fuck? How do you drink coffee? It's when you've drank that much coffee, your body's just used to it. Because I had, um, I went to the gym last night and I had a guru. You know, those oh, but drinks. guru's different. Guru, that shit'll fuck you up. Well, it's Guru, got caffeine. Red Bull. Yeah, but see, I don't, I don't but like they have do taurine Red Bull. also in there. No? Red Bull is like all chemical. Guru is the more natural. They're one. all both shit. They're not well, natural. Yeah, but if you look at the ingredients on the side of a Guru can, it's Dude. like ginkgo biloba and ginseng and panax. When extract, you were, remember when you were, um, remember when you were in trade school? Yes, I had started that job where I was working for a uh, app company. Um, okay, uh, I w- They were. They had gurus for free. They were, oh, or you'd, you'd, drink, you'd put, cha- you could put, a, it's a dollar a guru, basically. They had to deal with guru, and they were just all over the office. And the CEO of that company was like a fucking fiend. He, he, he a would, guru. Dude, he, I, I think he fucking took them anally at some point. Like it was just gurus everywhere. And he was always fucking riled up. So I was like, man, I could be like this guy. Look at this guy. He's all over the place. You know, it'll, I'll start drinking gurus too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to have a heart attack, dude. I kept, I, I was sweating. I was getting zits. I, it was just fucking weird. I kept That's drinking weird. it, but I didn't notice. But I would drink a lot of that shit too. Cause I, I bought them to help me go to. Cause at the end of the day, I'm tired. I work, and then I'm like, I'll go to go to the. But gym. there's others. There's amino acids you could take. There's protein. You have green other, tea. I think is green tea is great. I think you have other options. Way. Even me, I shouldn't drink this much coffee, but I know I'm gonna drink coffee till the day I die. <laughs> it might even be a cup of coffee that kills me. Oh, it just puts geez, me over. Your heart attack. Yeah, it just puts me over. But like, yeah, but so you're saying the CEO of Guru was a nut, nutcase? No, the CEO of that company I worked oh, for. Okay, the yeah. CEO of Guru might be cool. I don't know, but probably a nutcase. It's feeding people he's poison. Pro- ah, he's crazy. He's just high all the time. His eyes are all like always like an owl or something. No, the CEO I had at that company was a fucking nutball. Yeah. He was nuts. Yeah, he was nuts. Sometimes you meet and he people. He would cry like a lot. Oh, he's, he was emotionally <laughs> unstable. <laughs> what the fuck was wrong with him? What was the app for? Oh, he made all kinds of apps. We made all kinds of apps. So he was probably like bipolar or something. Yeah, he was fucked. Yeah, he was definitely fucked in the head. And he was wearing a tie every day and everyone would refer to him as sir. So you thought, hey, this is a man. I wouldn't refer to him as sir, but a lot of, nobody would refer to him as no, sir. No, but he's like, here he is, the CEO. So everybody's like, oh, this guy's got his shit together. And yeah, no, he didn't have his shit together. I fi- it took me months to realize. I was like, oh, this guy's just nuts. Why? He started crying out of nowhere? Yeah, well, in front of me, I think only some guy once. But then I heard another story about him just panicking and calling people up and crying. And he did, he, he, he like broke into people's emails and shit, like uh, your personal emails and stuff. Yeah, he went, he did some batshit crazy shit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope he's doing better for himself now. I don't think so. 
He's running a cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. I heard crypto. he lost a lot of money in the Chinese stock market, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the domestic one. Yeah, which is funny. I didn't... Uh, what are your, what's your take? We were talking about that before when I stepped in on cryptocurrency. Uh, I think it's too late. Maybe. I feel like the people who invested a while back, like the time when I had the opportunities, I didn't do it. Uh, I know. And they Everybody cashed in now. Saying. That's fine. But I feel like people are going to jump on the bandwagon. They're going to expect that kind of a huge gain. It's yeah. not going to come. Yeah. They're going to hold on to it too long for marginal gains, let's say. Yeah. And then... Well, I know I have a bit of money put aside in that. But I hope... Uh, I, like We've been buying altcoins, my buddy, and I, I don't know if they're going to move. They're, the, they're more the project that attracts me to them. You know? Yeah, no, I think it's cool. I think it's cool if you're, if, you, if you're not attached emotionally. I think it's cool if you start putting in now... And let's say one, because you you're what on bread and all these different fucking cryptocurrencies. Bread was the one I just got in. I just so, got in that today because my friend was telling me. About let's it. say you put crazy money in there. Let's say you put a oh, crazy. Okay, let's say you, you put a thousand dollars. No, you told me about bread. I just don't. So let's say you put a thousand dollars, and in two weeks or something, because of what's going on in the news and this and that, fucking hikes. You know, yeah. it stays for like a day or two, and it your money jumps up six, eight times. What I would do is because I know it's volatile. Oh, it's I would super volatile. Pull out. Right there, be like, this is my Super winnings. Cool. Even if it goes up another couple percentage points, this is what I got. I'm making my money. I'm happy. That's a problem. But gambling. it's not what's going to happen because this is a gamble. People are going to be like, no. The last guy, when he was on Bitcoin, my buddy, he invested two years ago. He's a fucking, he's a millionaire now. So I'm going to keep this. You're not, it's not going to reach that height again, right? Right. So you're going to end up losing it. What I'm telling people to do now is what I started doing is invest in silver because silver is pretty low. I was buying I, silver. I don't think I silver is, is, I don't think silver is where it's supposed to be. A lot of people, my friend included, who I do, uh, who I trade cryptos with, and uh, he has a lot of silver. What does he think? He thinks the same thing. It's undervalued. I was big into silver when I was going to Avaron back in the day. I used to buy silver then. And but then did, did you buy uh, stocks, bonds, or did no, you buy I physical? Bought physical? Me too. Yeah. Because I said I'm not. I want to hold it. Unless yeah. you hold it, you don't own it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think. And also, like, what, you're buying the Boolean, the one-ounce um, Canadian ounce. maples? Oh, yeah. you're buying bars? Yeah, 10-ounce bars. See, I don't know. I think, it, in my opinion, it would be better to get smaller denominations. 10-ounce isn't that bad. I mean, you get one-ounce um, rounds, you know, those Boolean. Yeah. And the Canadian silver is, like, the, what's, like, one of the best in the world because it's 99.9999% yeah. as opposed to the 3.9, the point three nine silver of the states, which... I don't think it's that big of a I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I get the Canadian one, yeah. Yeah. I they get. say they use it as uh, so it's, uh, practical applications that make silver valuable. Like, as opposed to gold, which stores value, silver, um, it's like the greatest conductor, so they use it to make solar panels and parts of your cell phone. And they say that there's actually more silver out of the ground than there is in the like it's a depleting oh is it we're depleting our resources of silver so they said that for years that the price of silver has been artificially suppressed that's what i heard and and i was reading up on it i was just looking at how it was going up and down from the 20s to now and it does look completely made up right because it's just there are arbitrary reasons that are throwing into it being devalued right and uh what the fuck we're using like how gold spike remember gold a couple of years ago when it spiked tremendously yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's gonna happen to silver hey that'd be good man well uh you still have your silver no i ended up selling it. oh you fuck i had a, i didn't have a much I had, I had a bit but uh how many I, ounces i had about maybe 40 or 50 ounces okay so let's say you have 50 ounces and right now the ounces are in the 20 dollar range let's how say how much 20 dollars i think 20 dollars i was buying it when it was uh it was about that. It was about twenty to twenty-five. Yeah, I, I well now it's seventeen to twenty, I think. But uh, I see it going up in the next five, six years, maybe. But I remember people saying that back yeah. then, and the reason I sold it, I just got out of school, I wasn't working, I was like, "Fuck, I need money. I'm just gonna sell this shit." You, uh, who'd you sell it to? I sold it at uh, this place called Empire Auction House. What did they do? They just auction uh, anything. Yeah, but I mean, they'll give you money for like gold and silver and stuff like that but they they give you a good uh rate it was like a decent rate i remember just like okay cool just brought it all to them because i didn't i didn't think i started losing my faith in it as well because it's really like you need patience like you need a yeah. lot of patience with this stuff uh those guys like this guy mike maloney i don't know he's an investor you can watch his videos on youtube another guy robert kiyosaki who i found this guy i found this to be very interesting 
Robert Kaisaki was uh, he's the author of this uh, book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh yeah, yeah I know who you're talking Japanese about. Japanese investor, right? And then he was saying how oh silver is gonna it's a moonshot. It's gonna be worth so much money one day. And then lo and behold, you find out the guy owns silver mines. So, well, because he really believes in silver. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you could argue that. I'm yeah. not saying that. Anyways, the, Mike Maloney made some really outlandish predictions, and it got, pe- got people like me. It got our hopes up that we thought silver was gonna like moon and it was gonna be worth so much. Mike Maloney was saying that silver was gonna be worth twenty five thousand dollars an ounce and gold was gonna be worth a hundred k. I don't know about twenty five thousand dollars an ounce. Uh, that's gonna take. You could we look have to deplete y- everything. But I could see it going to one one hundred thirty dollars an ounce in the next decade. If it, if um, who is it? It's, somebody's keeping them. Somebody's keeping keeping it down because they're fake numbers. There's no way. If you look at the spike and if you look at the difference with gold, where was it five years ago where gold just did? There was supposed to be a ratio. I don't remember what it was. Do you? Can you tell me what the ratio was supposed to be? Maybe you know more about I, it. I don't. I don't know. It's supposed to be like a certain amount, a ratio of gold to silver, like. One ounce of gold is equal to X amount of silver but dollars, it, and then the ratio got all. Of like, course, it doesn't. It, it doesn't all, apply anymore because what happened now is what is one hundred and thirty or a thousand. It's either one hundred and thirty-six dollars an ounce right now for gold, or a thousand dollars an ounce for gold. It's something. Oh, no, it's a lot. It's like a thousand. It's a thousand six hundred, a thousand three hundred. It's a lot. It's like twelve hundred or something. But you couldn't have. You could have bought gold ten years ago mm-hmm. for peanuts compared to that. Yeah. Think you could have bought Bitcoin back in 2010 or 2011. But the thing is, Bitcoin. I understand rich. people not going in. It's cryptocurrency. It's it was new at the time. You don't understand what the hell digital. What is this, right? I could see that. But for fucking gold, man. If I knew, if I was a smarter person, and if I had, I didn't have money back then either. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll tell. I'll tell you the reason why um, I got involved. I was buying cryptocurrencies, but I was buying all these altcoins, and I had Bitcoin, but it went. I through, remember. It went through my fingers because I was going. I was buying like weed on the dark web and dumb shit. And I was playing poker with it. I was just being an idiot. I was like, I oh, remember, I was Bitcoin. Yeah. I was a fucking idiot. Um, and I never had like enough for it to be worth something. But I had a friend of mine who told me about it years ago. Like, and it it's in its inception. It was worth uh, like a dollar, like eighty cents a dollar. And my buddy, uh, who's a pretty smart, he's a pretty success, success, successful uh, entrepreneur right now. Like, uh, I was gonna say sexy guy. I think it was. <laughs> so he's a pretty successful entrepreneur and. Um, he was the one who was telling me about it back in 2010. And if I only would have listened to him. Everybody has that story, right? Fuck, yeah. I would have been rich. I would have had so much. But now, so I started investing in these altcoins, as they call them. And uh, my buddy and I were, like, researching the, the the crypto market. Okay, we understand the volatility involved. I remember the first uh, few trades that we make, we just got in right in the uh, right. Uh, on the day before it started, sh- these things start shooting up and we're like, oh my God, we thought it was so easy. I like tripled my money in like the first uh, week, first couple weeks. And then the crash came and I was like, oh fuck. So now we're, we're trying to look at things more logistically. Everything kind of like balanced out. So we're about at the even point. But we looked at one in particular because I think there's a lot of hype going around on yeah. a lot of these cryptocurrencies. What's just happening? The numbers get inflated because it gets hyped up in the media. Yeah. Then people go and invest in a new uh, online new hype train. That inflates itself for a while until the people who were there originally are like, okay, this is my time to cash out. Right. It drops it back to reality. The people who put money in recently that joined the hype train start panicking. They pull out money. Yeah. It drops even below. And it's always those idiots that held on too long. Like I have some think? money and uh, is set aside in cryptocurrencies. I I like the project. I think that a lo- long term hold would be good for certain cryptocurrencies. But there's also ones that I feel like the one I was telling you about earlier because you want to look at numbers because some people they don't make any sense. They're like, oh look at this one. This one's gonna be worth like a hundred dollars. It's gonna be worth five hundred dollars for one. And you're like, there's um. How do you know? Well, I don't even know. I think there's just speculation. It's wishful thinking. But what gets me is that these numbers don't make any sense because the market cap, if it were to go to that amount, would be in the trillions. It would be worth like half the global GDP in some cases. Like they're like Ripple. Ripple's going to be worth hundreds of dollars. If that were the case, Ripple, Ripple with the market cap, it would be worth like half the global GDP, gross domestic product. Of the, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And then... You also have to consider just the basic laws of supply and demand. If a coin has 80 billion units, Bitcoin, 
in ma- like mathematically makes sense because there's only 16 million and there's by the time mining is finished there's supposed to be 20 million okay and as a market cap of something like 260 billion but you consider the fact that they're fairly scarce cons- if you compare it to the global population it's not a lot right it's not a lot of bitcoins to have around. Not a lot at all. If you think 16 million, 20, and, and by the end of like 2024, 20, they're going to have like 20 million. Now, all these other altcoins are coming out and they're in the billions. They have billions. They have like hundreds of billions, some of them. And they're like, man, this thing's going to be worth like uh, $500. This thing's going to be worth like $100. I predict a price shot of $200. It can't be worth that much because there's too many. So the one that my friend and I were speculating, if you want to look at a coin to invest in, just pure mathematics, you're like, okay, well, how long has it been out? What does the project entail? These are important. But then you look at the, um, the amount in circulation, what the market cap is. If the market cap is fairly low and there's a low supply and they're not going to be like making them, it's not like fiat currency where they can just print out fucking money. That can determine what you can expect as a long-term gain if the project is successful. Do you know what I'm saying? But I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you on this. I don't think um, n- the projected numbers make any sense. Right. Uh, That's why, I, like, I'm saying, like, the one that I was mentioning to you earlier, it's got um, less than Ethereum. It's got like millions, like maybe like 50 million as a cap. Yeah, it's capped at 50 million, and it's got less. Ethereum is over a thousand dollars now, and uh, Ethereum. The numbers make sense because Ethereum has like. They have millions, but they don't have billions. Anything that's in the billions, can you really expect? Because like the pure it's basic much, laws yeah. of supply and demand. If you have so much of something, it's not worth anything. It could maybe be. It could go up in value, and maybe as a short term gain, you could invest big amounts, and you just look at the swings. Oh, look at you know, if you have a lot, that's how you could trade. You can make a lot of money in a short amount of time, but it's like gambling. But if you want to hold something for value, you probably want something that's got a low amount. In circulation. What about uh, what about art? Would you invest in art? Art? <laughs> I don't know. What do you, I, I I remember that was a good piece right there. I think yeah, that's uh, uh, doubled or I'm, tripled I'm, in value. I'm, I'm holding it till it goes <laughs> ten times in value. Till Barack your, your, Obama your, dies. Your Obama painting. As soon as Obama's dead, I'm oh, selling geez, it. Oh jeez, it's gonna be worth. It's gonna be, we could pay this whole fucking. Pay this whole that's what uh, Poseidon was asking me the other day. He's like, "What should I invest in?" And I said, "Honestly." Silver and Magic the Gathering trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> what about Pokemon Go cards? Uh, I don't know enough about Pokemon. I thought you were going to give me a serious answer, like real estate, if you had the money. But If you have the money, obviously real estate is the best. If you get that's like the pinnacle. Because here's the thing. Real estate, if you get it at, at, good, um, at a good rate, if you get, no. number one, now that mortgages have been hiked, uh, the interest rate's been hiked in Canada, it makes it difficult for new homeowners, right? If you disregard that, you have the cash and you get something that's not super inflated above its market value. So you know that even if you want to sell tomorrow, you're not going to get screwed over. Then real estate is always the best thing. As long as it's not a decrepit building that you need more money and a lot more money to fix, real estate is always good because you could rent, you could live in it, you can run a store depending on what it is. Capital if it's commercial. Flow. Yeah, there's something going on with that, right? You can uh, put up a second mortgage after a couple. Of, you could work with it. It's That's almost as it being money in your pocket. That's great to have, real estate. But if we're not talking real estate, we're talking small um, and you have time to wait. Uh, I I think, I could be wrong, but I think silver's going to make a comeback. Um, silver's important. And art, if you know what you're buying, right, that's going to be worth. That's why I mentioned Magic the Gathering because I was talking with Poseidon, we were actually Googling this, we didn't know, but there was there's sets of magic cards that came out in the last decade Yeah, that like boxes that were selling for $80 are now selling for right. $400. I know. All you had to do was keep them. I know. I, I remember friends of mine being into magic when I was a kid. There was one card, it was called the Black Lotus or something. I think it's worth like $10,000. It's worth 18 Gs now, yeah. What? $18,000. Yeah, if you get it graded, it's good. That's, That's what I'm saying. Uh, that I consider art. I consider it a collectible. For sure, uh, yeah. uh, But that, again, that's, it's the value is all in the um, <laughs> in the demand. What do I, I mean, I had, like, such, like, um, you know, people have, like, comics and uh, cards when they're growing up. I don't know about you. I was big into comics. I still have a lot of comics. I don't think they're worth anything. I have a bunch of comics, too, but I don't think they're worth anything. Then either. again, I could be an idiot. They could be worth money. I have no you idea. should look into them. Doubt yeah. it. I think the whole point, I think, what this all comes back to is 
the hustle, like just hustle. If you're gonna invest in something, invest in. I always recommend investing in physical things. So if you can invest in silver physically, if you can yeah. invest in a house in in actual real estate, invest in something you're gonna keep. And crypto, I guess, obviously doesn't. Uh, well, crypto, unless you you have something that knows what the fuck they're doing, and you're in and you're out. Because like, I had friends who uh, friends acquaintances. Let's say this is one guy I don't like, and um, he got into the game late because his buddy made a lot of money off of Bitcoin. And he actually put money in. You remember when it was going up? Like last month, two months ago, remember when it was, he actually put money in, like a lot. And he went out to celebrate, right? Because it was going higher and higher and higher. Know. And do you remember when it dropped? Yeah. It went below what the value of what it was when he bought in. Right, but he lost a lot. So yeah. he lost money. He, it went below. What it, but he lost he pulls a lot. Out now, he lost a lot. And it's like, you're not celebrating anymore, motherfucker. You got greedy. You thought you were going to reach the pinnacle that your friend did when he started when it was worth pennies, Right. I could have started back then. So. Yeah, I could have too, but I was—I didn't know. Oh, stupid. So what he did is he got, instead of when it kept going up, he could have made, let's say, four times his money, six times his money, and cash out. Be like, okay, that's what I did. But he's like, no, nah, this for sure. It's never going to end. It's just going to keep going up. And then he ended up fucking losing. You know that uh, uh, the Winklevoss twins? Oh, they made fucking bank. But w- did they cash out? No, well, get this. I was reading something about them. So they became the world's first Bitcoin billionaires. Because they invested eleven million of in their the settlement that they got from suing Bitcoin. Mark Zuckerberg when they got in, yeah. you know, they I don't know what was the settlement was like sixty million dollars. Yeah. So they invested a portion that was like eleven million dollars in Bitcoin because they believed in it so much. Then it just skyrocketed. It took off to the moon and was like twenty five thousand Canadian dollars <laughs> for like a fucking bit. It was like crazy. Now supposedly I was reading something. They didn't cash out. There's like, oh, uh, Winklevoss, the headline read, Winklevoss twins lose their billionaire status with Bitcoin plummet. And I'm like, you didn't cash out? And then, they're like, and then they justified it. They're like, we're not worried because Bitcoin's going to be worth three to four times worth what it's worth now. It's like, dude, how it's, greedy do you have yeah, to be? How greedy, you have that's... billions of dollars. You, you're, you, you're grand, your great, great grandchildren never have to work a fucking day in their lives. Like you're set and you think you're going to live forever. You're going to have time to spend all this fucking money. I would have, like, in idiots, the billions, man. I would have cashed out. Yeah. Turned off cell phone, everything, social media. You wouldn't have seen me anywhere. Yeah, would have been off the grid. Travel, do my thing, live life to the fullest. But you still pop on every once in a while, like Dave Chappelle, do comedy. Just do comedy and then leave. Yeah. Like that's it. Right, you'd live your life. Uh, I wouldn't be like, like oh well, let me try to get more billions. It's like, dude, how long do you think you're gonna be alive? You're not gonna right. live for three hundred years. Right. I mean, I'm 34 now, and uh, I'm almost dead. Like, <laughs> I feel like I boy. If that's a thing, you know, like uh, hundreds of years ago, we would have died around this yeah. age. But with life extension technology, now you have billions. You could live for uh, another hundred years. No, but I, I, I've noticed that a lot of people it's act a, like they're going to live forever. It's insane. In the way they treat people, in the way they plan. Um, yeah. and we have that sickness in us as human beings that we think that we're invincible. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's we're really not. Weird. You could die tomorrow. Dude, it's weird. When I was growing up, when I was, um, I was like 20 years old, one of my good friends got hit by a train and died. I went to go. I, I didn't end up going to the funeral because I had a surgery done on my arm. I, had, I was a big into skateboarding when I was young, so I had broke my uh, wrist. I had to get a screw. And the day I was all hepped up on medication, and I had a big cast, and it was rainy. I, I didn't want to have to wear a suit and cover it, you know. Yeah. So I just I never either ended up going to the funeral, but I went to the wake, which uh, sounds like a bad joke. I always wonder why they call it that. The guy was like just fucking sleeping. There's no waking there. It's it like, is interesting. Why do they call it a wake? Fucking wake? Cool, huh? Fucking wide awake. It's, Language. It's fucking lying down. Yeah, I wonder. He's not woken up at all. I'm just cu- curious where it comes from. I would. I'm I would be. I would be very curious. intrigued. I'll look this up after the podcast. Should, should but go on. Up. I want to hear. It. So I go there and I and I see him. And it's only when you like when you're young and like uh, you have somebody close to you die. It's like such a. You're trying. To, it's you're a mind fuck. You're trying to wrap your head around it because you're like. This guy was just, I was hanging out with him drinking a 40 like last week. I've been to a lot of funerals this year actually, and some of them were young people. Like age. what, like 20, like 30? Late 20s, early 30s. How did they pass, pass away? Everybody had different reasons, but all of them could have been avoided, to be honest. It was all accidents? Uh, yeah, if you want to call it that. They were accidents, they were just dumb decisions. And um, 
it, it's fucked. It puts a lot of weird shit into perspective. And it's kind of like what I said. You don't know from an accident, from a bad decision. You don't know what's going to happen to you yeah. from one day to the next. And yet you still plan like you're going to live forever. Right. I'm not telling you go out now, um, waste all your money and just go crazy because you got to have some kind of a plan, right? No. But try your best to enjoy it. You have to enjoy the ride. Because if you're just thinking of the end, right? That Like, oh, I want to have X amount of money before I can retire, right? And I want to retire young. You might make that money when you're 55, right? right? And what'd you do? I understand you didn't, you didn't, you didn't go out, you didn't travel right. in your 30s and your late 20s when you would enjoy it. Right. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, I see these old guys that have like these sports cars, like 67 years old, they're driving Porsches or whatever. Like, I saved up my life, I got this. You think you're really gonna enjoy that sports car at 67? Imagine 28 year old you driving that sports car, fucking around. Yeah. Like, imagine being like, oh, I'm going to put off comedy until I, I don't know, I buy this building or something like that. You think you're going to be as funny and you're going to enjoy doing comedy when you're 60 as you would have when you were in your 30s, just going on there, venting and doing your thing right, and right. being relevant? Yeah. You shouldn't, you, put see, stuff, you shouldn't put stuff off too you long. You see older guys who uh, want to get into comedy and they're so out of touch. Yeah. And you saw older, older people. The thing is also, like, I find I feel out of touch. I'm only, like mid 30s and i feel like nowadays this is my theory like people like we 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 feel i don't know about every i can't speak for everybody but i feel much older than i am in my head only because things are moving so fast i feel out of touch but with not because of age but just with the way society is yeah but that's part of being a comic i think we see things differently so we comment on it if we saw things the exact same way everybody else did we, there would be nothing funny about you us. know what it's like 30, 40, 50 years ago, like, I would have still been considered, like, a young guy, so to speak. Like, oh. I, I mean, I, I feel old, but I, we are technically young guys. We but if you if you try to talk to somebody who's in their early 20s, like, it's like, oh, my God. They feel like infants. But I see 40-year-olds now that I think, yeah, it's just a kid. He's just acting like a... I'm not no, saying I'm it's talking good. about the you, way that they think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is you need to grow up at some point, right? But growing up doesn't necessarily mean you become old. Does that make any sense? Like, I, I think that I'm still young, right? But I'm matured. I've grown up mentally enough to be able to live in society, contribute to society, take care of myself, right, take right. care of people around me. I'm able to do that. I'm able to be uh, to self-sustain uh, without being harmful to other people. I think that's being mature because I look at people in their, in their not everybody, obviously, but I, a lot of kids in their mid-20s who not only can they not self-sustain without their parents because they don't want to, not because society's fucking them, because they don't want to. They just don't know how. Um, but they also don't contribute anything. Right. And uh, if anything, they're detrimental to society, the way they treat people, the way they act when they're in public, right? right. So they're not contributing anything. Uh, anything that they do to their own benefit is to the detriment of people around them. Yeah, uh, that's sure. not helpful. I think that if you could mature. I've seen 15, 16-year-olds that are way, not just intellectually smarter than I am, but they're also more mature and have their shit together way better than I do, way better than people my age, older do, right? Yeah. Depends on the person. And that I could appreciate because I'm like, okay, they're, they're kids, but they're grown up. They're grown ups, you know? Yeah. They're adults. They know what they're doing, right? Yeah. And I know people 30, 40 years old who, especially in comedy, you meet them, who they're yeah. just children. Yeah, especially in comedy, you do meet them. I, I, mean, I, 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 I meet a lot of them in comedy. Advice. I see them in other contexts too, but I've met a lot of comedians. I'm like, how the fuck... Are you sustaining yourself right now? Because I also felt like comedy was one of those things for people that didn't want to really grow up. It's yeah. a good it's a good avenue for people who don't want to grow up. Because again, it depends on what you mean by growing up. Because I personally consider being able to be mature enough to talk to be a good comedian and talk about stuff, I consider that growing up, right? Um, growing up doesn't mean being disconnected and, and being out of touch with what's happening now. But growing up does, in in my mind at least, seem Part of growing up means to see what's happening and criticize it because you understand more of what things are and how they should be and what they were and what they're not, that you could actually make points. Like, I, I don't think a kid that doesn't know anything at right. 15 years old, doesn't understand humor, doesn't understand life, can go up and be as relevant. Like, you look at young guys, look, look at Harrison, right? Oh, he's he's fucking smart, right? So he's young, but... He's mature enough to understand comedy, to understand why these jokes are funny. But can you imagine, though, because his jokes are very... Uh, and, and I'm not saying this uh, in an insulting way at all, but they're, uh, they're very, there's a broad appeal to the jokes. Yeah. He's talk, it's like they're very observational. Yeah. 
can you imagine when Harrison has life experience? Oh, it's gonna be even crazy. That's what I'm saying. Even, but the, him, he's already mentally at least he's uh, and being able to write a good joke and being able to be that you have to have some kind of maturity level. You have to have yeah. some kind of and if you, if you're not out there doing fart jokes, you know you have to have some kind of it's smart. Not like when I started doing comedy, and, holy and shit, you were just doing Nazi propaganda humor. <laughs> and Harrison, for example, is fucking smart. That's why it works because he, he thinks he knows. He knows what he's saying. He understands. And he knows it's going to make you laugh he knows as long as you get it, laughing, right? Yeah. And uh, but again, that doesn't come with age because look at him. He's younger. He headlined Art Loft last he, night. He's younger. He headlined Art But he's younger and he knows more than a lot of comics that are fuck older than me on uh, on the scene, um, both comedy related and in life. Yeah. No, right? like and even though he hasn't lived life yeah. to, you know, yeah. to a certain extent. So that's what I'm saying is that being old or whatever, it depends on what you classify it. As getting older, I, I think that part of getting older is being mature, but there's no guarantee that you're going to become more mature being older. That's that's why I'm saying live life to the fullest now in the sense that do what you have to do. Scramble. You want to start a podcast? Start a fucking podcast. You want to, um, I don't know, uh, open up a restaurant, fucking whatever you want to do, don't keep putting it off. Do what Should you have I to do now. call hustle. my podcast Hold the Mayo? <laughs> We had this conversation. We had this conversation ten fucking times. Call it, hold the middle, call it whatever the fuck you want. Even with that started. other comic, it d- can we do fuck, whatever can you I, want. Can I give a shout yeah. out to that guy? His uh, what's his name? Um, I don't remember his first. There's a there's a comic in the UK. His name is Sean Mayo. Okay, that's not but Mike. No, Mayo. that's not. But Mike there, Mayo. There's, there's a comedian. comedian. No, he has Mike. He has actually the same name as me. I Mike think. Mayo, another comedian. Mike Mayo. I think it's who, Mike Mayo or Jonathan Mayo, but he, but his last name is Mayo, spelled and, the same M E O. And his podcast is Hold the Mayo. Which yeah. was the idea that you wanted for your podcast? This is the best idea. Well, you're promoting his podcast now because it exists. If they look at Hold the Yeah, Mayo, but I have a theme song that. <laughs> okay, was so here's the thing. Like right now, you made the theme song, you did all that, you're going to start your podcast. And this is what you're telling me. You're telling me the reason why you're not doing it <sighs> is because you found there's another guy with the same name, no. Hold the Mayo. However, I believe the reason you're not doing it is because you're lazy. Now, I could be right. <laughs> Or Maybe you could be wrong. Partially. Who like, knows? I mean, let's, let's <laughs> the see, point is, let's say we're, we're what you should do, both. what you should have done without me telling you, is, okay, he has that. Fuck, it sucks that he took a good name. It's like when somebody says a good joke that you were thinking of. Oh, okay, it that. sucks. They took it. You move on. You call it something else. You call it past the Mayo. You call it the Mayo Chronicles. You call it, uh, I don't know. Past uh, the Mayo. Mayo can we, can we put um Can we put a, like in the comment thread, people comment on your podcast, right? Yeah, they could comment. Can we... Um, uh, <laughs> point to this point in the podcast and say what what should you what, do you have any suggestions to your audience yeah, you want to say people are going to say hold the shit I don't know but the, the point is <laughs> cut the shit get, mayo cut the shit mayo look these, these are an excuse that's what I'm telling you about maturity <laughs> these are not real excuses name it something else and fucking get going alright how long are you going to put this off for I don't know maybe uh and you're just this is just an example of every other I do the same thing to myself there's stuff yeah. I, I put off for like the longest time like um, what? I mean, change your underwear? Like what if? <laughs> no, I put stuff. <laughs> just stuff that I'm doing business wise, stuff that I'm oh, doing yeah, comedy yeah. wise. I put stuff off, and then I just have to snap out of it. Think about it. Like, what am I fucking waiting for? Same it's thing with this studio. A lot of, it. A lot of this, this studio videos, putting videos up online. But I love what your videos are. I love those videos that you're putting up now. But that took me forever to do because I guess fear. I don't know what the hell it was, but I was like, Fear's oh, I kept one. finding excuses, and then I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, man. People want to see this. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to have fun with it. Let me just do this. There's comfort in complacency and yes. like inactivity, but, but you uh, got to get you got to break through. You got to break out of that. Is like that's the enemy, man. Hmm. Um, I th- I got to go take a leak, but well, that's uh, all the time we have for today. We're just going to wrap it. Well, that's all the time we have for today, Mr. That's Mayo. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you for sir. coming. Uh, hey, thanks a lot to for the. Me. Uh, psychiatrist office <laughs> <laughs> i thank you very much for the good advice i appreciate it was it good advice if you I fucking so. take it i don't know I, no, I wanna, I'm, I, but i'm working on shit look i got i got uh, i want to see your podcast i want to fucking i'll share that shit i want to listen to it i'm excited i want people to do things like this it's just that with you i feel like i tell you i, f- I feel like i have you motivated and then a week later you're like yeah well the thing is i was gonna do the podcast but then there was popcorn chicken waiting for me at home and uh, that's what happens all right all right Next episode that you're on, it has to be promoting the new podcast. Well, deal. I'll see you in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Mike right. Mayo, um, everybody can follow you on Twitter, but you're never on Twitter. Uh, Facebook. Facebook at Mike Mayo. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just share it. I'll okay. just share it in the comments. Uh, yeah, share it in the comments. <laughs> Go take a leak. Thanks, bud. Thanks, see you man. later. <laughs>